Uh, good morning. We are now dealing with the November 2020 paper. We dealt with the 2020, we dealt with the 2021 paper. Right, so November 2020, let's start on point one. Partial differentiation. Okay. <coughs> and now, for three marks, we need to differentiate this. Currently, as it stands, it is a fraction. <coughs> we can use a quotient rule, but then we also have a power here. We have to use a chain rule. So, do we really want to use two rules? You know? The quotient rule and the chain rule. So, what we will do is it's best to rearrange it. Take the base to the top, so therefore there will be no more fraction. So now I've got z is equal to, if I take cos to the top, it will become cos of 5x plus 2y. Let's put the whole thing in brackets. All raised to the power, we get to 3. Alright. So now, or if you want to leave it here, you can leave it here. But it's best. So write it the way I'm showing it to you now, in brackets with a power So now, dz over dx, this is partial differentiation, okay? Which you will see it's only the last part which will be different compared to your normal differentiation. So, this is going to be d over dx of z, or dz over dx, but the way I'm explaining it to you, d over dx of z, that means differentiate z partially with respect to x. Now, with partial differentiation, you will see now, let's start first with an example. Right, so all our rules apply here. We have a power, which is a number, so we use the chain rule. So that's going to be 1 times minus 3, which is minus 3, and that will be cos of 5x plus 2y and then minus 3 minus 1 is minus 4. Right, so we'll time moves. Now we go inside, we read from left to right. We got cos of your function here, of x and y. So the derivative of cos is going to be minus sine of 5x plus 2y. Times now, now finally we deal with the 5x plus 2y. Now you're going to see the partial differentiation here. When you are differentiating partially with respect to x, you will treat any other variable as a number. Okay, that means you imagine y as the number, whatever number, like 2 times 2, 3 times 2. So when you differentiate 5x, you get Five, because we are differentiating with respect to x partially. But this is treated as a number. That means 2 times a number is still a number, and the derivative of a number alone is 0. That's your partial differentiation. Easy. Right. Now, let me just simplify this. But this is the main thing. Right. I also want to simplify negative times a negative there is a positive. So I've got minus 3 times minus 1, which is a positive 3 times 5, which is 15. So that's going to be 15 sine of 5x plus 2y, all right, divided by cos to the power 4 of 5x plus 2y. Is there anything that we left out? Minus 3 times that will be a positive 15. Now well, that is it. 1.1. Alright, so a suggestion from my, one of my students states that we could also change 1 over cos to z. Right, so instead of taking this to the top, you could have changed it to z, so that is fine. Let's do it. So z is equal to 1 divided by cos is going to be sec to the power 3 of 
5x plus 2y. So we're using our trigonometric identities, the reciprocal identities. So now it's going to be the same process now, chain rule. So dz dx, that's going to be 1 times 3, which will be 3, sec 3 minus 1, which is 2. So I deal with the power first, times. Now I will differentiate sec of 5x plus 2y. The derivative of sec is going to be sec of 5x plus 2y times tan of 5x plus 2y times. Now at the end, we are differentiating the 5x plus 2y. The derivative of 5x is 5 and the derivative of a number. Remember, we treat this is partial differentiation, so this is a constant, and that will be 0. Okay. What do we need to simplify here? Okay, so we got 3 times 5, which is 15 sec squared times sec, which will be sec to the power 3 of 5x plus 2y times tan of 5x plus 2y okay and that's that we don't need to simplify any further right. um, if you were wondering if you wonder why are the answers looking different remember this is fine isn't it it's perfect but if you're wondering let me just show it to you okay so that 15, that sec can be written as 1 over cos to the power 4 of 5x plus 2y and 10 can be written as sine of 5x plus 2y all divided by cos of um, 5x plus 2y. Alright, so now here Let's see how different this is going to be now. So we got sec to the power 3, sorry. That is, uh, sorry, my mistake there, that is 1 over q. Sec to the power 3, 1 over cos to the power 3. 10 is sine over cos. So now 15 times 1 times sine, that will be 15 sine. 5x plus 2y and cos to the power 3 times cos will be cos to the power 4 of 5x plus 2y and it is equal now but unnecessary to do all this. This is just to show you that it is the same no matter what we do. The final answer if you have to simplify this. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Our next question, 1.2, this is parametric equations. So we've encountered them, we encountered them also in chapter 6 under arc length, even surface area examples too. Alright, so now, let's deal with this. So we want to find dy over dx, but we have x is equal to 1 plus 2t y is equal to 3 all over 1 plus 2t. So, we got x in terms of t, we can find dx, dt, the derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of 2t is 2, yeah, dy, dt. Now, you can use the quotient rule if you feel like, or if you want to do this here, Take this to the top first. Can you see that? We now changed it to it's another chain rule. Can you see that? It was the quotient rule, no more. Now it's a chain rule because I rearranged it. So now 3 times minus 1 is minus 3, 1 plus 2t, minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2, and then the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of 2t is. <coughs> Right, so that is the chain.
same room? No. No. We need to find dy over dx. So, dy over dx is going to equal to dy over dt multiplied by dt over dx. Check your left hand side and right hand side to make sure the formula is correct. So you check dt and dt cancel there. So I've got dy over dx on the left, on the right you know, it's okay. Now substitute. What is my dy over dt? Okay, let's simplify this. See, I do simplify it. Alright, so this is going to be minus 3 times 2, which is minus 6 all over 1 plus 2t all squared. So my dy over dt is minus 6 all divided by 1 plus 2t all squared times dt over dx. Now, where is my dt over dx? So, this is dx over dt, which is equal to 2 over 1. So if we swap, and if it becomes dt over dx, that means I'm inverting it. Right, so I'm swapping numerator and denominator, so that becomes 1 over 2. You're clear with that? Simplify. Minus 6 divided by 2 is minus 3, all divided by 1 plus 2t, all squared, and that is our first derivative. That is dy over dx. Now, now, second derivative. d squared y all over dx squared. So how do we write this out? Second derivative with respect to x. So first, we know that we have, we have dy over dx. Okay, we already found dy over dx. We need to differentiate this one more time with respect to x. d over dx of dy over dx. That means differentiate dy over dx one more time with respect to x. Check d, if you look at it, d, d, d times d will give you the d squared, dx, dx will give you dx all squared. Alright, now this is going to be d over dx. What is my dy over dx? I just found it there, which is minus 3 all over 1 plus 2t all squared. Alright. Now, we got a problem now because this function is in terms of t, but the formula is d over dx. So what do we do? We use the method of implicit differentiation, the one that we learned in n5. Okay, so what do I mean? We need to differentiate this with respect to t. Okay, we need to differentiate with respect to t, but I must not change the whole question. Right? It's a simple trick that you do. You change this, you write it as d over dt, and then dt over dx. Okay, so now check my dt and dt will cancel. I end up with d on the top, dx in the bottom. So now this enables me to differentiate this with respect to t. So what do I have? I have minus 3 and that's 1 plus 2t to the power minus 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm just rearranging it. Take it to the top because I've got 1 plus 2t is all squared in the top, I mean in the bottom. Take it to the top, it's now ready for the chain rule. Alright, so we got our d squared y over dx squared. I can differentiate this with respect to t. Minus 3 times minus 2 will give me a positive 6. And that's going to be 1 plus 2t minus 2 minus 1 will give me minus 3 times the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of 2t is 2. Where am I at the moment now? All I did was work this part out. I differentiated this with respect to t. 
Don't forget that there's still times dt over dx. So that's going to be times, where's my dt over dx? There's my dx over dt. So dt over dx will be times 1 over 2. Okay, with that? Now, 2 and 2 cancel. So you end up with just 6 all over 1 plus 2t to the power 3. And that is our second derivative. We now move on to integration. So, first question here. Yeah. You can see that this is integration by parts. Special case. Okay. Integration by, by parts. Special case. When you see that an exponential function is multiplied by a trig function. Okay, it's a special case because you know you're going to use the formula two times only and then the question repeats itself. Right, that's what happens. So, let's start. Now be careful now, it's, it's the integral of y dx. This is the question paper. When you are answering the question in the exam, you're not going to write down y. You don't go and write down y, you go and write down the integral and you check what is y for It's e to the power minus 3x cos 3 So you're going to substitute here. Don't waste your time and write down y. So this is the question and there's my dx, the integral of y with respect to x. Alright, special case. So we know we're using the formula twice. So that's going to equal to so a f of x g of x minus the integral of g of x times f prime x dx. That's using the formula one time. Okay, so we're going to be substituting there. So this is applying it once in here. You're going to apply the formula for the second time. f of x. So let me do my substitution first, sorry. Now I'm going to substitute here. Right, let's do it for the first time. Now, our priority list. Now, for this special case, it will work both ways. But let's just stick to what we know from for finding f of x. For choosing f of x. Right, so for priority list. We know that f of x, your f of x, from the priority list, you got inverse number one, logs number two, exponential number three, um, no, no, not exponential number three, your powers of x number three, exponential number four, and trig function number five. So this is number four on your priority list. This is number five on your priority list. So four lies above. Now it comes before number five on your priority list. What comes before will always be chosen as f of x. Except that this can be done the other way, but let's just stick to our rules for f of x. So that means f of x is e to the power minus three x. Okay, now. This, so what do we know now? We know that this is f, and therefore, if this is f, automatically this is g prime. Right? But the formula does not have g prime. This is not g prime, this is g. So from, if g prime is cos, g will be the original function. You need to integrate to get g. So you integrate cos, you're going to have sine 3x all over 3, sine 3x all over 3. You integrate cos, you get sine f prime x. Remember, this is f. f prime means differentiates e to the power minus 3x. So that's going to be minus 3 e to the power minus 3x. Or e to the power minus 3x times the derivative of minus 3x, which is minus 3. If you want to simplify it, you can. Unnecessary, right? So this is 1 over 3 e to the power minus 3x sine 3x 3 and 3 cancel 
Negative times the negative will be positive. The integral of e to the power minus 3x sine 3x dx. We, now the focus is on the integration. You treat this as a new problem. Okay. So it's exponential times trig function again. So it's integration by max again. Right, so this is going to be 1 over 3 e to the power minus 3x times sine 3x plus we're using the formula for the second time. So this will be f of x, g of x minus the integral of g of x times f prime x dx. Now, Let's substitute. So this is going to be, this is my 1 over 3 e to the power minus 3x times sine 3x plus, now we're following the same priority list. My f is e to the power minus 3x. So this will be g prime. So when you integrate sine, you will get g, which is going to be minus cos 3x all over 3. This is going to be minus cos 3x all over 3 times f prime x. The derivative of e to the power minus 3x is going to be minus 3 e to the power minus 3x dx. So we have applied the formula two times, you stop there. Okay, what happens if you apply it three times? You have to apply it one more time. It must be four times. If you apply it five times, you must be applied one more time. It will be six times. You will come to the same final answer. It will just take you two times longer than you actually would. Right. So uh, now, what do we notice? Now we notice that we have the integral of e to the power minus three x cos three x dx. The, the question now appears here. You can see e to the power minus 3x times cos 3x. I'm just going to simplify this. So this is equal to, we got our the integral of e to the power minus 3x cos 3x dx is equal to 1 over 3 times e to the power minus 3x sine 3x uh, and then we got minus 1 over 3 e to the power minus 3x cos 3x this part of here and then a minus times a minus times a minus is a minus so that's going to be minus 3 and 3 cancel again you can say that the integral of e to the power minus 3x cos 3x dx and you can see now why we call it the special case because we have this being repeated so that is equal to that if this was a plus sign here yeah, you made a mistake because it's going to cancel out here be careful. This one has to be a minus for this example I'm talking about, not for all the examples, just for this one. Because they are equal, now you need to take this to the left hand side. So the integral of e to the power minus 3x cos 3x dx plus the integral of e to the power minus 3x cos 3x dx is equal to what we have on the right hand side here which is 1 over 3 e to the power minus 3x sine 3x minus 1 over 3 e to the power minus 3x cos 3x now these are like terms so you add them up 1 plus 1 you can see that will give you 2 times the integral of e to the power minus 3x cos 3x dx which is equal to 1 over 3 e to the power minus 3x 
sin 3x minus 1 over 3 e to the power minus 3x constant x. So now all I need to do is divide by 2 and I'm done. So therefore the integral of e to the power minus 3x cos 3x dx is equal to this whole thing divided by 2. And now, get put down, plus C, since all the integration has been done. This one was 5 marks. It's just that I'm explaining at every single step, or almost every single step. That's why it looks very long, but it can be done shorter than this here. Yeah? It depends on if you're doing certain things better. so simple because we are always, we're always expecting to complete the square. Right. We complete the square if there's a square root there or if it's a fraction, you know, there's six formulas but now it's clear that the examiner forgot to put the square root. Right. So it's a straightforward n4 example now. You're integrating term by term by term. So as it is, you integrate minus c. c is represented as a constant, so that will be minus cx. Integrate x squared, that's going to be x to the power 3 over 3. Integrate 6 minus 6 minus 6 x squared over 2 plus c, and you're done. That's all. In, okay, 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 let's continue to do this here. Minus cx minus 1 over 3 x cubed minus 3 x squared plus c so the student just tells me in the memo they completed the square that means the memo is wrong okay if they completed the square what why will you complete the square for what reason okay that means so maybe you see the memo was correct according to the correct question so probably something went wrong when they were printing this before it went to the all the students, so they, the square root came out there. But completing the square, what are you wasting? What are you going to complete the square for? Right. All right, so remember that in the exam paper there was no square root. In the exam memo there was a square root, there was an error. This is, according, this is the correct answer according to this question. Right. Now, let's move to the next one. Cos to the power 3 minus cos to the power 5. Um, what can we do? What can we do here? We can deal with each one individually. We can. We can deal with each one individually. Or, if we take out cos to the power 3 as a common factor, we're going to have 1 minus cos squared, which is sine squared. I think that would be a faster way to do it. I'm just thinking. Right. But nothing is wrong if you do this one and you do this one individually. That is 100%. But let's see what happens if you take out uh, cos to the power 3 as a common factor. So I'm left with 1 minus cos squared. Now, can you see that? Cos to the power 3 times 1 is cos to the power 3. Cos to the power 3 times cos squared is cos to the power 5. So that's going to be cos to the power 3 and 1 minus cos squared is sine squared. Now, now we have products of sine times cos. So we look for the odd power. If we have an odd power, we split the odd power. Okay, so what do I mean? That means this can be written as cos uh, x times 
cos squared times sine squared. So now I can change the cos squared. I can change this cos squared to 1 minus sine squared. The whole idea is to get all the sines within brackets and the exact derivative outside the bracket. So this is going to equal to cos x. So that's 1 times sine squared is sine squared minus sine squared times sine squared is sine to the power 4. Now, it's clear if you want to use your u substitution, you can. You let u equal to sine and du over dx. The derivative of sine is going to be cos. You don't have to use u substitution, but I'm just showing it to you. dx is going to equal to du divided by cos. So what happens now is this is cos x yes cos x sine squared sine is now u so this is going to be u squared minus u to the power 4 and dx is going to equal to du divided by cos so the exact derivative cancels cos and cos will cancel so I end up with u squared minus u to the power 4 du and now I can integrate with respect to u so that's going to be 2 plus 1 which is 3 over 3 and that's going to be 5 over 5 plus c and you're done don't forget to substitute back for u u was sine That was that. Let's move on to the next question. Next question 2.4 10 to the power 4. Standard. Okay, there's a standard, there's a, you know, the set method for dealing with powers of 10 and cos. So this, I don't think anyone would have got it wrong unless you didn't go over the basic rules for 10 and cos. In N5, we go up to the power 3, and N6, we learn 4 and 5. Okay, so now, when you got 10 to the power 4, you will write it as 10 squared times 10 squared. Okay, <clears throat> it's different from sine to the power 4. Don't think of sine. Now, this is different from sine to the power so here yeah. you change one of the two. You change one of the two square identities. One plus ten squared is equal to say squared. So ten squared can be written as say squared minus one. Now, after you do this, you will remove the brackets and change this to two different problems. Okay. At the moment, it's just one problem. Okay. Now, when I say one problem, I mean one type. Uh, there is like basically one term. So that's going to be tan squared for x times sec squared for x. So I'm going to multiply tan squared times sec squared and then tan squared times minus 1. That's what I'm doing. Right. So I'm separating it completely with the dx. And tan squared times minus 1 is minus tan squared to the power 4. I mean, tan of 4x. Tan squared 4x. Right, now, what do we do? 
you should realize that this is exact derivatives. Exact derivatives. This is not a standard integral because there's nothing that you differentiate that gives you tan squared. So you go and you use the formula square identity one more time. Okay, so tan squared can be written as sec squared 4x minus 1. Here, here you can use a u substitution if you want to. Right, now I'm not going to use the u substitution here. Let me use the method of inspection. Okay, but u substitution will let you equal to tan 4x. You can always do that on your own. du over dx, sec squared, sec squared, and sec squared will cancel. So I want to use the method of inspection to be faster. So I've got to tan 4x all raised to the power 2 times sec squared 4x. Now, this is inspection. So I'm dealing with, you must understand that I'm dealing with f of x. Your f of x is tan 4x, your 2, all raised to the power n. And the exact derivative, f prime x, is sec squared. Right. So this is what I'm dealing with here. So if this is the situation, then my answer will be f of x to the power n plus 1 over n plus 1, provided your n must not equal to minus 1. So, it's all about exact derivatives. Even the previous example, so this one here, it was a waste of time to do u substitution. Okay. When I say waste of time, that means it will slow you down, but it's still correct. Now, what is the derivative of tan? The derivative of tan 4x is going to be sec squared 4x times what? Times 4. What do you see? Do you see 4 here? No. So you cancel the 4 by multiplying by 1 over 4. That's all. Now, you go straight to the solution. So now we have, here's the k, f of x to the power n, f prime x exact derivative. Now this will equal to 1 over 4 and that's going to be tan 4x, 2 plus 1 will be 3 over 3. Alright, now here you're integrating sec squares. So what was the primitive function? That means what did you differentiate that gave you an answer of sec squared and that is tan. 4x all divided by 4. All divided by 4. Negative times a negative is a positive. Integrate 1, you get x plus c and you're done. So therefore, this becomes 1 over 12. And that's 10 for x to the power 3 minus 1 over 4. 10 for x plus x plus c. Alright, so 2.5, that is the last one under question 2. We are integrating ln of 1 over x. So, what we can do here is we can rearrange this, we can simplify it first. So, this can be written as ln x to the power minus 1. Now, from your log logs, I can bring down this exponent, so it becomes minus ln x. I can take it back up, it becomes x to the power minus 1. There's nothing to do with integration, it's just log logs. Okay, now 
we are integrating just the let x. So basically, it's then x times 1. So remember how to integrate the x. Integration by parts. So my f of x is equal to ln x. g prime x is equal to 1. So f prime x, the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. And g of x, you're going to integrate 1. And you get x. So therefore, integration by parts, that's going to be f of x, g of x, minus the integral of g of x times f prime x dx. That's an easy one. Integration by parts. What is my f of x? It is lin x, g of x is x, that's x, f prime x is 1 over x. Okay. So now, this is going to be x lin x minus the integrating just 1 because x and x will cancel there. So that's going to be minus x ln x minus you integrate 1, you just get x and you're done. Plus c. So that becomes minus x ln x plus x plus c. And that was question 2. So we continue with the rest next time. How was the exam for this one?